Okay, we'll try to break this button down as quickly as possible here. Let's see here. So I've got this, um, basically this shape, which is half of a square chopped off, rounded curved edges here. I could change the color. I might lighten this a little bit. I'll go over here. This is off screen. Maybe I'll lighten it just a little bit. And click OK. All right, so that lightened it just a tad. And we'll go through the process of making this button. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I will modify convert to symbol and instead of a button I'm going to make it a movie clip. So I'll call it BTN1 for button 1. And it's movie clip registration point is in the upper left hand corner and click OK. So now it's a movie clip and there are advantages to that which we'll be talking about again uh, pretty soon. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, double click on this button right and I will make a second keyframe here um, alright let's see here the second keyframe insert keyframe and on the second keyframe I will have the color of the button be um, clear just like this tabbed area right here so I will I've got the second keyframe right here I'll take the color chip here change it to white alright and so now it's solid white now I gotta figure out what is the transparency level on this part right here if I'm gonna make this work so I'll go back to scene one click on the movie clip here I'm gonna have to unlock it click on it double click on it and I can see right off the bat let's see here if I and select it there it is and the see-through is 70 percent alpha uh, it's off stage right now, so you can't see it, but right here on the right hand side it says alpha 70%. Um, maybe I can see it right here. If you go right there, there you see alpha 70%. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, and looks like I just changed it to gray instead of white. So I'll double click on it, select it, make sure it's white, okay, and make sure the alpha is still at 70 percent. All right, there we go, better. Now back to scene one. Okay, so now I'm back in scene one. I select my movie clip, double click on it, go over here. It's white. All I got to do now is select it and make sure it's alpha 70 percent, which it is. And now they should match when um, when we see them together. I mean I can double click on this and reverse the keyframes to just make sure that they match. Let's see here. Just dragging these keyframes around. Now I want to get rid of this one. Remove frames. So now the white one is in front. If I go back to scene one, they should match. Okay, so it looks pretty good if you can see here that we've got pretty much a close match on these tabs right here um, you can see it's a movie clip if I double click on the movie clip on keyframe one the color is uh, white and with uh, 70 percent alpha and on keyframe two it's a solid turquoise-ish blue and if I want to switch these around I can just click and drag it over and then I have to click this one and drag that over click this one and drag that over and then I click on this one right click and remove frames so that I just have the two frames right so now I have my two button states uh, when one buttons active or not so I'm gonna need a new layer make a new layer and on the new layer I'll call it actions alright and once again I'm in right now this movie clip which I've named button one so you can see here this is scene one right and then I select the movie clip and then I double click on the movie clip and I go into symbol editing mode and now I'm in the movie clip alright I can select this keyframe and I need to open up my actions window and I'm gonna click I'm gonna type in stop open and close parentheses and a semicolon okay and then I'm going to copy this frame not copy copy frame there's a difference so copy frame and then paste frame. So now I have two stop action frames. So 
Um, if I was to hit Control Enter on my keyboard and publish a movie, this would be the movie, and you can see I have the the button right here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this button, and I'm going to copy and paste it a few times and see how the the sizing works. So I'll just copy this button, copy, paste, 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 and now I'm going to just drag them out. Okay, and so the sizing works right now, but at some point I might need these buttons to be a little bit smaller if I'm going to have more sections up here, more tabs or whatnot, then I might need to make them smaller. And that's no big deal. If I decided I wanted to make them smaller, all I would have to do is double click on them and scale them down. Or I could just scale these down and and that would be fine also. I could scale down the, the insides of the button or I could actually scale down this movie clip itself. But regardless, the other thing I'm going to look at here is the X position. This X position is set at 379.45. This one is, uh, I mean the Y position I'm interested in, 91.05, 91.05. I'm looking right here. So they're all lined up um, pretty nicely. And what I want to happen is when, um, kind of like the other site that I worked on, when I hit Control Enter on this other site, I'll show you what I'm talking about, you can see that the top, the front tab is white, and then the other ones are colored, and then as you click on each one, they will switch colors and switch positions. So that's what we're going to work at. Um, we're going to keep it as simple as possible and to make this work nicely. So now what you're going to do is you're going to, the first button here that we select, we're going to do is we're going to give it an instance name here and we'll call it BTN1. The name of the movie clip is button 1, but we're also going to name the instance here BTN1 and hit enter. Okay, then I'm going to select the next movie clip button and I'll name it BTN2, hit enter to make sure it takes. When you select the button you should see the instance name up here and there's BTN3, hit enter, and then BTN4. Now this is very important. Each movie clip is the same movie clip in the library, but they have different instance name here on the stage. And that's really important because we're going to have to write some scripting that goes to each one. As you can see in the library, all I have is this one BTN1 right here. I only have one button movie clip, but I'm using f four instances of it here on the stage. Okay, so then what that means is I can, on the action scripts, I can, on the action script frame, I can click on the little A for action script. I can open up my action window, which is, I leave open here all the time. You can just have window actions, keep it open or open it when you need it. It's up to you. So it's right here. It's at the top. I have it. And... I can say btn one dot go to capital A and stop uh, capital S for stop and I'll make it go to frame two all right and hopefully you can see this let me set the pre I'll change the font size so it's a little easier to read there you go and I'll copy that and paste it four times and then this is button two, button three, button four and then we'll see if this works. Alright, there we go. Hit control enter and you can see now that the front button has the um, clear transparency and the other um, movie clip buttons are on the the blue and so that looks pretty good